To top it all off, Joseph Book of Mormon actually opposes, even contradicts many LDS teachings and doctrines today. So tonight we are going to go through some of those and point them out to you. Now, remember, in terms of doctrine, the Book of Mormon was primarily a product that reflects 19th century Christianity and that the Book of Mormon teaches doctrines that are counter to the LDS teachings today. Remember this? Here we go. Number one, Mormonism today teaches that God was once a man. Prior to his death, Mormon founder Joseph Smith said, We have imagined and supposed that God was God from all eternity. I will refute the idea and take away the veil so that you may see. However, in his Book of Mormon, which he started off with, it preaches Christian doctrine. It says in Moroni 7.22, God knows all things from everlasting to everlasting. Moroni 8.18, God is unchangeable from eternity to eternity. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever, and in him there is no variableness that a man would have, Mormon 9.9. And in 3 Nephi 24.6, it says, I am the Lord, I change not. These are biblical teachings. This came straight from the Bible, this idea, right into the Book of Mormon. The second thing, Mormon leaders and their manual have taught directly and repeatedly that Jesus was not conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit overshadowing Mary, but it was through a relationship with God the Father who is in a body of flesh and bone. That eliminates the, the biblical idea of virgin birth. LDS apostle Bruce R. McConkie said, Quote, Jesus was begotten by his father as literally as he was conceived by his mother. Doctrine, uh, doctrinal New Testament commentary. But the Book of Mormon teaches the biblical position. It says Mary shall be overshadowed and conceived by the power of the Holy Ghost. That's in Alma 710, a traditional biblical teaching. Third, in one of Joseph Smith's later revelations, he says in Doctrine and Covenants 130, verse 3, that the idea that the father uh, and son dwell in a man's heart is, quote, an old sectarian notion. Mormons do not believe that Jesus dwells in your heart, even though the Bible teaches that he does. But Alma 34, 36 says, The Lord has said he dwelleth not in unholy temples, but in the heart of the righteous does he dwell. So another biblical tenet preached in the Book of Mormon, not believed by Mormons today, and actually refuted by LDS leaders and teachers in their manuals and, and writings. Mormonism teaches that there are many gods with a capital G. LDS apostle Boyd K. Packer said in a recent past, Anyone who believes and teaches of God the Father and accepts the divinity of Christ and of the Holy Ghost teaches a plurality of gods. That's the LDS stance. If you believe in God the Father and Jesus Christ and the Holy Ghost and that their deity, you believe in a plurality of gods. You're a polytheist. That's a plurality of gods. But in the Book of Mormon, uh, it refutes Packer's statement. Listen to this. Book of Mormon, Alma 11 says, is there more than one God? And he answered, no. In uh, 3 Nephi 11, the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost are one. In, in Moroni, uh, Mormon 7.7, 7, the Father and unto the Son and unto the Holy Ghost, which are one God. One God. Not a plurality, Boydy. Boydy K. Not a plurality. Go back to your little house there, your 1.3 million, and go research plurality of God, you pagan. But I'm sorry, it's not a plurality. There's one God, Boyd, Apostle Boyd. One God. Okay, and then in Alma 11:44 it says, Christ the Son, God the Father, and the Holy Spirit, which is one eternal God. Okay, so again, the Mormon, a Book of Mormon lays it out for people to hook them, but along comes Boydy and changes things around in their mind. Mormonism today would never, ever, ever pray to Jesus. Well, listen to Joseph's work of fiction aimed at creating a new Christian Bible. It says in 3 Nephi, And behold, they begin to pray, and they did pray unto Jesus, calling him their Lord and their God. This is straight from the pulpits of a Christian. 
church. This is what Joseph Smith saw as a young man. This is what he included in his Book of Mormon. Mormons today make fun of the Christian idea of worshiping and glorifying God forever. They will often say to Christians, well, what are you going to do for eternity? Sit on a cloud and play a harp? I mean, they make fun of us because we don't know what's going to happen in the eternities while they think they do. But listen to the Christian sounding idea Joseph put in the Book of Mormon. It says, the self-same end has he, God, created them, men, listen, that they should glorify him forever. That's in Jacob 2.21. This is a line straight from the Christian community in which Joseph, to glorify God forever, that's from Christian mouths, my friends. The Latter-day Saints reject the idea of hell. Even to the point that on this Barbara Walters clip we're going to show you, we have this LDS guy saying, everybody's going to go to heaven, Barbara. Everybody. Barbara Walters says, am I going to go to heaven? He says, yeah, of course you're going to go to heaven. Because the Mormons today, they reject the idea of hell. But uh, LDS 10th President Joseph Fielding Smith said, quote, we do not believe that hell is a place where the wicked are being burned forever. And Apostle uh, John A. Widstow wrote, in the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, there is no hell. Okay, but the Book of Mormon clearly teaches the Christian doctrine, and it says, quote, if the church is built upon the works of men, they are hewn down and cast into the fire from whence there is no return. The Mormons say that's not true. There's no eternal hell. There's no fire. That's not what that says. And in classic Christian speech, 2 Nephi, Jesus, for he has redeemed my soul from hell. And 2 Nephi 1.19, God delivered the saints from hell. Here's some more. To endless misery to inherit the kingdom of the devil. Endless misery is a concept of eternal hell. Into hell that hath no end. 1 Nephi 14.3. Listen to this. Oh, the greatness of the mercy of God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has delivered his saints from that awful monster, the devil, and that lake of fire and brimstone and endless torment. Endless torment, my friends. That's in the Book of Mormon. Fire and brimstone. Why? Because Joseph Smith copied it from the Christian tenets. And later, when he got a following, he went berserk and started talking about no hell and no uh, literal God. This rhetoric is straight out of 19th century revivals. One, a couple more. And listen to this. Listen to how this sounds. And now, my beloved brethren, can ye be puffed up in pride in your hearts, setting your hearts upon the vain things of the world, they, these are they who shall be hewn down and cast into the fire. Listen to this one. Talking about a woman in the Book of Mormon. She stood upon her feet and cried with a loud voice, Oh, blessed Jesus, who has saved me from an awful hell. Oh, blessed God, have mercy on this people. If I were to read some of these passages and you didn't know the Bible, you would think these passages came straight from the Bible. It's a total counterfeit. Mormonism today teaches the lie that people will have a chance to hear the gospel after this life. In 2004 Manual of the Mormon Church, page 52, it reads, In the spirit world, the gospel is preached to those who did not obey the gospel or have had the opportunity to hear it while on earth, end quote. But the Book of Mormon, speaking of all who die, says, They, are righteous. they who are righteous shall be righteous still. They who are filthy filthy still. And Alma 12, uh, 27 plainly states the biblical stance saying, there is a time appointed unto men that they must die and after death must come judgment. Book of Mormon teaches biblical principles but uh, doesn't give it credit. Mormonism today teaches that Adam's disobedience was a good thing, that it, it's a praiseworthy thing. And that it was good that he was disobedient to God's commandment. LDS President Joseph Fielding Smith, quoted in the Ensign Magazine in 2006, said, So don't let us, brethren and sisters, complain about Adam and wish he hadn't done something that he did. I want to thank him. You want to thank him for all the suffering and pain. Really good there, old Prophet Smith. Anyway, uh, the Book of Mormon teaches the biblical truth, making it clear that, that God does not give dual commandments. He doesn't give a commandment so that people don't know how to obey it or can't obey it. The Book of Mormon literally says, The Lord gives no commandment unto the children of men, save he shall prepare a way for them, that they may accomplish the thing which he had commanded them. 
It's plain and simple, but the Mormon teaching on the fall changes that. And Mormonism today, because of Joseph Smith's later ideas, it teaches the exaltation of man. I'm not going to cover that. Mormonism, uh, Mormon teaches today that we're not to worship the Son, Jesus Christ. Uh, I vividly remember Bruce R. McConkie saying in the Marriott Center at Brigham Young University, I was there, quote, we worship the Father and Him only and no one else. We do not worship the Son. We do not worship the Holy Ghost. But again, the Book of Mormon presents the Christian view. Listen, I bet you didn't know that it said this in the Book of Mormon. They did fall down at the feet of Jesus and worshiped Him. That's in the Book of Mormon. Speaking of Jesus, 2 Nephi 25, 29 says, Wherefore you must doubt, bow down before him, Jesus, and worship him with your whole soul. Mormons don't teach this. They do not worship Jesus today. They don't believe that. That's not even in their vernacular. Okay, and of course, polygamy uh, justified to the point that Brigham Young said, the only men who become gods, even the sons of God, are those who enter into polygamy, end quote. But the Book of Mormon renounces polygamy. It says in it, behold, David and Solomon truly had many wives and concubines, which thing was abominable, thus saith the Lord. And yet Mormonism continues to practice it secretly today.